episode 61 done and done nice don't be uh don't be too shocked by the intro mm-hmm. clip art oh okay yeah uh i wonder if there's like you know like there's a certain period of time where like like Genghis Khan if it was like a hundred years ago mm. people would have been like oh he's such an evil person right. but like is there a specific when how long it needs to be before, before you can just be like oh yeah just Genghis Khan you never think of him like a um, like a like a murderer you right it was like a historical figure yeah yeah, yeah 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 I understand what you mean I think it's like a thousand years two thousand years I don't know when is Hitler correct to use that's what I'm saying yeah so like, uh, like over 40 Dan, years, right? Dan Carlin was talking about that actually how uh, how like maybe in 2,000 years, they'll see him as like a, you know, like somebody who brought culture together, like, you know. Okay. Because like, um, yeah. Alexander, I think it's Alexander the Great or Genghis, no, Genghis Khan. He's the one who made us um, bring markets together, even though he's a killer, but we see him now as like somebody who unified a lot of the lands. Very cool. Yeah, just saying. All right, so. Cool. Well, merchandise. Yeah, let's pick up, uh, pick up some teas. On Teespring, shop.lmfire.com. Um, support the podcast like that. Or just like, share, subscribe, comment. Um, uh, good stuff. Yeah, video reply. I keep asking for it. <laughs> still getting none. I see. Um, but, yeah. Right. Here we go. Two, one. Boom. And we are back with another episode of Crowded Gamers. This is episode 61. Yes. Six one divisible by six one and one and six. No, it's not divisible by six. So this is the standard typical podcast where we talk about five things. No, four things. We cut it down in the interest of my editing time. Uh, yeah. You might notice a sweet overlay. Well, the same overlay. Yeah, <laughs> it does. yeah that's true. If you were watching it live, you if, you're, if you're watching it live, you'd notice a slight difference in the overlay. We figured out how to make this more efficient when it comes to my editing. Yeah. Um, Because time is is money time. (laughs) Oh, bless you, said the Lord. Uh, (coughs) Bless you twice. (laughs) Always when we start. Yeah. Uh, Or time overlays. Time. Time is gold. Time is money. So in terms of time and money, uh, Pokemon Go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got that into that. Like, really I got late, so into Pokemon Go really late. My time was not money on that one. <laughs> well, maybe it's the right time too, because there's a lot of things that have been changed. That's true. You, you know, better. so it's, it's also try to get, like get people to yeah to get new people as well, right? For so sure, that's the whole point. And and it's funny because like, um, uh, hold on, wait, wait, wait. You might hear some clicking on my phone because I'm uh, pulling up. The notes but uh oh, notes. so um you did notes yeah i did notes yeah, i did notes <laughs> uh so anyways uh when pokemon first came out i was traveling talking about this before and then you guys were like talking about this freaking pokemon game and i remember i think i i think i facetimed you while i was in the philippines and you're talking oh. about yeah this pokemon game is so good i was like and then even when you're in cambodia it's like please do not play Pokemon while... And I was like, what the hell? Really? What? Yeah, yeah, there's signs <laughs> everywhere. It's like, uh, these are sacred grounds. Do not play Pokemon on the sacred grounds. Oh, okay. And I was like, all right, like, this game must be intense. You know? See, what's the problem? It's just on your phone. Yeah, true. I don't know. I don't, out of respect. Out of respect. Uh, whatever, whatever. So when we came back, I got. <laughs> I tried to play it with you. Okay. And uh, I hated the game. I was like, this game's so terrible. I couldn't get the spin. I still can't even get the tossing the Pokeball correct. Oh, uh, the curve so spin hard. or whatever? Yeah, 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 I don't like it. But, um, yeah, so so I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to play this game. And then at Brownlee's wedding, Ray got into it. Well, I was, I was walking with your brother because we'd walk uh, Athena. And then he'd be playing. And I'm like, I'd be like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like, you guys are, I'd watch him, like, interact with people he didn't know or, like, and I thought that was kind of cool, like bringing people together, right? Mm-hmm. But I was like, I'm still not sold. I don't, I don't want to play the game. And then um, at Brownlee's wedding, Ray was playing. He's like, yeah, I, I stopped playing, and then I just got back on. And I was like, and then he played it the whole night. And I was like, what's so good about this game that you're, like, playing it all night? So then I was like, yeah, let me just download it, right? And I got <laughs> hooked. I got hooked. Okay. Because you know what it is? I was, talk- I was talking to brother about this one. It's how Pokemon was meant to be, you know? Yeah, like, I think that's why it will work the way it is. So. Like I, I was, his, it was funny because like he'd be like, "Oh, this," and I, I'd name the Pokemon, and he'd be like, "How do you know the names?" Like, but I'm like, "Yeah, I was a huge Pokemon fan, like the Game Boy versions. I was yeah, obsessed. Yeah. Like, I'd play that all the time." Um, 
because it's like you're in a world you get to catch these cool Pokemon, evolve them. They're like your pets, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you battle with them and stuff. But like, what this game does is like you instead of playing as Ash or whatever, mm-hmm. you are you. You are Ash. You yeah. you are like no, but like you are you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know, and like. I really, I really like that about the game. But a lot of the features that I like, uh, your brother was saying that weren't there in the beginning. I was like, oh, it's so cool how you can do this and this and this. And he's yeah. like, yeah, that wasn't that wasn't there though. Well, it's it's like you know, it's like the start of the game, and they, it's like ready for release, but there's still more to come. Kind of for thing. sure, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I guess that's why I jumped on right now because it's like it's at that point where it's good now, you know. Right, right. Like you can, I uh, some things I really like are mm-hmm. like. Um, the weather boosting that was really cool so like specific pokemon will come out according to the weather oh yeah yeah yeah. that's cool um i like that you can send gifts to friends and then you can build your friendship score that's cool mm-hmm. um i like yeah i like the i like how they're doing this um so i got this uh alua pokemon okay so there's so your brother's saying how like He's, like, the expert on this. This is my go-to guy whenever I'm, like, I got a Pokemon question. And he'll send me, like, links. So like, he watches hey, so many Yeah, videos, he does. He does, like, yeah. Literally. You can get really into the game. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, like, I'd say I'm, like, moderately into the game. Yeah, yeah, Like, I'll yeah. play it, but, he's, like, he plays it I'm not deep, much, you know? But... Yeah, he's, he's deep in it, you know? He's, like, he's he sent like me the calculator. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, no, but, like, he sent oh. me the calculator. Like, he'll, like, he'll, like, oh, what did, what kind of Pokemon did you catch? And I'll read the description. He's, like, oh, yeah, that's uh, that's probably, like, a 15 at a whatever. And I'm, like, what the hell? How'd you know that? He's, like, yeah, I read all the calculations and, like. <laughs> I just find that. I was, like, yeah, I like, couldn't do that's all that. Too yeah, I know, I know. Me, me too, me too. Like, but, so, the thing I really liked about the game is, like, I asked him, like, what's the, what's the goal? Like, what's the end of the game when you when you finish mm-hmm. and he's like you set your own goal yeah, yeah, yeah i was like so you're saying i don't even have to fight other pokemon he's like no i was like whoa you could just catch or yeah. or you can like make level 40 your goal or you can make like i want to battle all the gyms you know or like i want to catch all the pokemon catch them all That's the yeah catch idea, them all yeah, right? yeah yeah it's like it's really up to you what you want to set so like personally i i only want to keep cool looking pokemon okay so like I keep I keep sending ugly ones back, right? yeah. and he's like, "Why do you keep doing that?" I'm like, "That's that's my goal, yo. <laughs> I want a stable full of like sick Pokemon, you know." Uh, but then like his goal is like, "Okay, I want to." Well, his was hit level forty, did that. Now he's like, "Let me just catch some rare ones and like blah blah blah." So, <laughs> but what it always yeah. keep coming out with something like uh, too too intense, like to entice the entice user. The yeah for sure. User. Oh, one thing that I felt like it was, it reminded me of uh, Ready Player One. Mm-hmm. So, like, because you, you assume the character and you're, like, living in this world, you okay. know? Yeah. It's was, it was funny. I went on this uh, poker walk with him, and I, I was saying how dangerous it is because I didn't remember the walk. I only remembered playing the game. Mm-hmm. Like, because I look back in my memory, you know, like, the walk would be over. I'm like, dude, where did we walk to? Because we were following the map in the game. Right. You know what I mean? So I wasn't really looking at the I was looking at the world enough to, like, not bump into stuff yeah, 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 yeah. you know but like like in terms of appreciating the scenery no i was i was looking at the map on my phone mm-hmm. like and trying to catch stuff uh and i think it'll be even crazier when they they get the artificial reality more on point because mm-hmm. like right now you can like catch the pokemon using like oh sorry, not artificial augmented reality because like oh, you yeah, could yeah. see our AR, apartment yeah. you yeah. know and then you can like see where the Pokemon is in the apartment and you can catch the Pokemon in the apartment. Right. You, know yeah, you can kind of do that, but right now, right? Yeah, but it, it's like, yeah, you can kind of do that. But it's like, it's like the ultimate form of escape. Like, it's like the doorway to escapism right now. Mm. Like, I could see how it could get even more intense. Like, if you put, like, the VR goggles on and then augmented reality and then all you see is just, like, Pokemon. You know, you can get to that point. Yeah. If you put, like, uh, the, the uh, cell phone holder... For your eyes oh yeah, yeah you know yeah. what i mean like uh to make it seem like augmented yeah, yeah yeah i know what you mean yeah and then they add like your your brother's got like this clicker to throw oh. the ball oh yeah yeah, yeah. That, what was it he's got like a like a poker clicker thing oh yeah, yeah 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 it's it, there was like an attachment they were selling yeah yeah exactly and like so like imagine if you had the augmented reality and then you just toss the clicker like you, you use the clicker mm. it's like do where where it is reality and video games separate you know what i mean you're like in it at that point um could be already in it 
we could, yeah, we could, we could be already in it. But what I found uh, with the game is that because like I'm a social media manager, like it's some my job, yeah. and like it, I think the reason why I gravitate towards the game is because it reminded me of my job. Because mm-hmm. it, it's almost like each Pokemon is like each post, and then you curate the post okay. to make it more appealing, right? A stronger <laughs> post, right? Okay. With like more likes, like the it's like the CP. All right. You know what I mean? And, like, there's, like, ways to power up your post, you know, mm-hmm. like my little techniques, which I won't get into because then you'll also steal my job, whoever you're listening. But, yeah, so you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. like, it reminds me of, like, social media, mm-hmm. which is kind of scary because it's, like, there's something, there's some underlying thing that's there. Well, it's meant to be a social kind of game, too. Right? Ex- yeah, exactly, exactly, because then you, yeah, exactly, totally, totally. And then I was saying to Rav, like, if you could just chat with people and he's like yeah that's not in there yet but imagine if it was then you start like chatting using the the app right yeah, they, yeah. you know what i mean like mm. it's it's it can become like super social uh in terms of so mm, oh okay so some things that push it apart from other games are uh first of all it forces you to walk so yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So like I, I, I came home and then I showed my sister one of the crazy uh, something you got yeah no but it was like the special one it's the what would I call it the uh, Alua Pokemon I guess yeah so you just I mentioned that but yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly yeah so I, I caught a cool Alua Pokemon and it was like a Vulpix Alua and it was like it looked really sick and then she was like oh I want one and I was like yeah she's like how'd you get it I was like I hatched it from an egg but like the eggs are like seven kilometers to hatch three kilometers and i asked your brother mm. like can you just shake the phone and he's like no it tracks you through gps so it's like okay so she has to walk right and then she went for a walk because she's like yeah i gotta hatch this stuff too i was like yeah i want to <laughs> i want to go for a walk now too just to hatch it you know uh, so I, I like that it's pushing you in that in that realm yeah it does yeah and in terms of markets uh i personally feel like it it helped build the portable battery market yeah i, I was about yeah. to say that yeah, yeah like awesome. with without pokemon i don't think the market would have been so high like external batteries are like everywhere yeah uh and not only that but the key ring i think the the you know how they have the ring in the back of the phone yeah i think that increased because of pokemon because you don't want to drop your phone so and too. use it for the yeah. spin you know mm-hmm. yeah so it's affecting it's affecting a whole culture and like trends and stuff Mm. Yeah. I think I think so. Yeah, like yeah. the market the market's really good. Yeah. Best best game. Like jump on it if you're if you're into like games and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I got. I mean, love Pokemon. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, what level are you at right now? I think like twenty four. Cool. I'm at seventeen. So, what? Really? Yeah, so yeah, that's what my sister said too, bro. What? She's like, how did you get so far so fast? And I asked I asked your brother too. I was like, how did I level up so it's only been like two, three weeks, three weeks of playing. Yeah, that, damn it. And what then the Yeah, I know, right? And he's like I was like I told him like my sister, like, Oh, I, I'm at that level because I'm playing with your brother. Like oh. yeah, but but the reason why is because we just keep doing tasks. Oh uh, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's but- like because he's so it's strong because, yeah it, that like, it was so long before so hard before because he didn't have those things yeah like the strength and that's right? why i'm like at 24 and I'm like yeah you know? like your, your brother's pokemon are so strong that like if i'm like yo i, I need to complete this task right. by beating this gym he's yeah. like okay and then he'll just beat it for me and then like i'm there so. oh that's cheated no but like uh, it's like teamwork kidding. it's teamwork yeah, yeah no i know i know, you know i'm just uh, gets you out there just yeah levels, no i'm level 18 actually sorry oh okay. i leveled up last night Oh, yeah. what the hell? And it's cool for, like, waiting around. Like, you know? So, mm. like, of course, like, people are like, but then you should just appreciate the moment. That's why I got my 500 hour, people. I understand what you mean about appreciating the moment. But you can appreciate the moment by appreciating technology. Yourself too much in the moment, then you're not thinking. Mm. So one could also conversely say that you're doing detriment to society because you could be thinking of a solution. Right. But you're not thinking. Right. See what I'm saying? So, like... Oh, yeah. So what is the correct path? Is the correct path to appreciate the moment or to think? True. Exactly. There is no correct answer. Get off my back. Pokemon's cool. All right. That's what I got. No. Nice. What was the next topic? Uh, you got your Elon Musk. Oh, right. Okay. Elon Musk. Well, it's, it's more about... Oh. 
windows, windows open. open. Damn. All right, whatever. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, what, wait, oh, quick pause. So I was listening to, um, I was listening to uh, Aubrey Marcus on oh, what's his name, Duncan Trussell, right? And then Duncan Trussell's like, oh, you are like a. Um, you are so these these two people are arguably like super spiritual right and then um duncan's like oh you're you've become a teacher and aubrey's like no i want to become a student right and then duncan's like i listened to this really cool line about like um uh it's best to it's best to live your life as a student but leave the world as a teacher Mm -hmm. because you're passing on what you know to the next generation right Okay. And I, I agree with that. I was like, I like that. Aubrey did not like that. He's like, I think of myself as a student forever, and like, if I want mm-hmm. to be a blah, 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 right? Um, that's not what the point was. But then the dog started barking, right? But these are two arguably people of like, you know, like if if you were looking at it as a novice, you'd be like, wow, these guys are so like profound. Like, I thought that too. Right. Um, not that they're not profound. They are profound. But when the dog started like, chewing on a squeaking toy he got frustrated and he was like let me go like deal with this dog really quick blah 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 but i was like but but you just said that you should appreciate like (laughs) it like that's just life like life is life so why would you get upset about it you know yeah like athena always barks and she's like currently she's chewing on the uh chair and i'm trying to stop her with my other hand (laughs) you know what i mean like i don't know right spirituality is a tough cookie okay Sure. But you know it's not tough? Elon Musk's usability for his amazing Tesla cars. Like the Segway? All right, go ahead. All right. So that was last week when they they do this thing like rating dealerships. Oh, okay, cool. How well are they are at selling cars? Okay. Tesla's last place. Ooh, rough life. Yeah. Okay. Let me explain. It's well, not a- it makes sense because they're custom cars. What? Are they custom cars? What like do you mean you have to cars? pick out your car. They don't actually make it. They don't. They don't have. No, no. They don't. They don't mean it. It's not mean. It's not oh, like that. It's okay. like so when someone enters into a dealership, how good is this dealer guy to sell me a car? Okay. Okay. Uh, because the whole point of a dealership is to pressure you to buy a car, right? For sure. But at Tesla stores, they don't. Yeah, that's, okay. that's not the point. The point is education. Right. Okay. So like that's why Ian was kind of happy with that. No, it's kind of like Apple. Yeah. They do that too. It's like they... It's to, it's, it's to have them come back and check it out. Maybe they'll buy it eventually. But the whole point is to educate why it's better. Okay. And and then he was saying... Uh, well, well the, like, the, the, like the article change was... change your mind, change your life kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, the article was saying the the, uh, the... the issue with dealers is they're not... They don't make profit... They make profit by the, for servicing. Okay. Right? And with electric vehicles, there's not really much of a service stuff. Okay. So the, it's not incentivized Okay. to sell. Okay. They push for, like, the gas cars or whatever, right? Because they got to go through so much servicing and stuff like that throughout its life. True. Okay. So, like, that's another reason why they won't... That's why they don't do dealerships, because that's another reason why they don't... Um, they won't sell electric cars that way. Because... There's low maintenance. Yeah, and they don't make money through money. They oh, make they make profit make through servicing, right? Right, right. It makes sense. So and that that's why that model doesn't work for them, I mm. guess. So they tried. So they're, th- th- yeah. The whole point is that not to, it's not to. You, you know that's kind of like pressure you to sell something. That, that's kind of like, um, it, it's kind of like because I felt that too. Is that when we were looking at cars a while ago? Yeah. I felt like that. Like they were like the pressure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's like. Oh, we can give you this deal. We can give you all this. Yeah, like yeah, you sure. know, I'm like, like I, because I knew what it, what it was going in, so I knew to say, yeah, no, it's okay, I'm good. <laughs> like right. I just wanted to see how far I can go, because I knew I was just gonna say no. Right, 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 right. right? So it's just, it was interesting, because yeah, you just, the, we went to the Tesla store. We didn't feel like that at all. Yeah, no, because it wasn't like, that. It, it was yeah, just, uh, oh, check it out. This car, you take a seat, you know, experience you, it. You know you, what? You can do a test drive or set up a test drive or whatever, but like. Yeah, you know what that thing kind of sounds like to me. It's kind of like uh, measuring the effectiveness of steel using the metrics used for wood. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like it's like not apples to apples. It's apples to oranges. So you're measuring Tesla's performance off of something that it doesn't 
actually use. No, I know. You know yeah. what I mean? It's no, 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 no. And yeah. I'm, I'm like saying that it's like, it's weird how like the marketing is presented to us to say like, oh, they're in last place, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's that's like, why you got to read the, yeah. to understand why they're in but last then, place. But then that'll definitely affect <laughs> stockholders, right? Because they'll like read it. Uh, it's like well, shareholders or whatever. I don't think so. Because they, they read into what, what it is. Sure, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. You know. Influence. It really it hasn't affected them. That was that's the whole point. Even he tweeted out to Elon TRL. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. He doesn't care. He's friggin' Tony Stark. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyways, that was a, that was a, that was a really short one. <laughs> All right. So your uh, the next topic is. A controversial, kind of tr- controversial. I guess it was kind of. I don't know. I don't know. Wait, uh, what, is I it controversial say, uh, or is it just like? I don't know. Well, I wouldn't say. I would say it's interesting. Yeah, I would say it's interesting. All right, go ahead. Because it just came out. Uh, the Guardian did an interview with, like, his family and mainly his mom. Whose family? Osama bin Laden. Oh no! <laughs> oh snap! All right. So yeah, what'd yeah. she say? Uh, I love my boy. Well, she, yeah, she kind of, yeah, that, that, yeah, that is what she mother, said, of course. Every mother would say that. Yeah, like, he was a very good kid. He loved me so much. Oh, no, that's sweet. Uh, yeah, I mean, Aww. yeah, it was like, but he was like a, <laughs> a yeah, leader she, of a, yeah, yeah, like, she didn't true. see that side, too, For right? Sure. So a lot of, like, like, he's only so, only the one side, of course. Why For would sure. You show For him, sure. what, would she sh- what would you show her, like, all this other stuff that he's into? That's true, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And it, like, his, it's a PR piece to, like... Like, I don't know. You said that they had, like, a lot of money still? They still have. They're, they're a rich family. Yeah, but, like, what kind of PR? Like, why why would you choose to do this now. thing and now? No, yeah. I think people wanted to ask. Just the, the Saudi government was not allowing it to happen. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And yeah, now, there's like, a, now there's, like, a new yeah, yeah. Saudi government, and he's more, like, more, more relaxed. Contemporary, yeah. liberal. Yeah. Makes sense. Like, I'll get into that one a little bit later. Um, the, the, the king guy. Hmm. Uh, so basically, he was raised by his like stepfather, like since he was like three years old. Oh, okay. Um, it's because his mom got a divorce. Oh. it's kind of interesting. I was like, oh, that happened back then too, for them. You're they're Muslim, right? Yeah. So you're allowed to have a divorce. <laughs> it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know. Not allowed. Um. Uh, so they're saying like how oh he became a different man when he went to university. As most people will. He's saying like he was um, he met this guy, Abdullah Azam. Okay. And a member of the Muslim Brotherhood. Well, what is that? I have no idea. Oh, okay. Uh, and was later ex. He was he, that guy was later exiled from Saudi Arabia. So are we saying uh, is she trying to suggest that her son was a victim? Yeah, like he. Uh, the quote is actually is, you know. He he was um, I don't know if it's that in that S paragraph or not, but like yeah, he was um, brainwashed and basically kind of like uh, but aren't like we, a cult. Are we all victims in that regard? Because it's like our our entire. If I was born as him, and then like all of my experiences could have shaped me in the way that he got shaped, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So it's like, so are we not all victims in that regard? Uh. I guess so. I don't know. Right. It depends on what level of brainwashing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like, Actually, I, did I have he a, really change that much, or was he kind of already into that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have a like my next topic is actually quite related to this, but keep going because it's like, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah. he had. Uh, it was. It was. In, it was. Yeah. Like it was in his twenties when he got that brainwash mm-hmm. and all that stuff. But so like, it could be. I don't like, know. Like with with all this stuff that we consider bad, like because I listen to the hardcore history. I'm this. I'm not getting into my full topic yet, but like this is like a side note of it. Uh, They're saying that <clears throat> like a lot of things that we think are in just now are like like good for back then. So like if you were to, uh, you know, like death penalty, and then they put them to sleep, and that's how they die. Mm-hmm. Like people are like, oh, that's so horrible, blah blah. blah. But back then, they used to tie the four of your limbs. To, ro- to horses oh, yeah. and then they pull you apart yeah. or they like cover you in honey and bury you mm. and they, so you know it's like it's all relative so of course yeah anyways uh, yeah that so anyways going back to that guy that, that brother Muslim brotherhood guy so he got exiled from Saudi Arabia okay and just like Osho and he became got he, uh, exiled from India he became Osama's spiritual advisor oh just like Osho <laughs> 
<laughs> his spiritual advisor. Okay. Yeah, I guess whatever. Is, uh, is Osama like a, a military leader? Like what? Like I mean, obviously he became, he, he became one. one. Yeah, yeah, but like, how did was but he, he was just like, a, he was part of a rich family. family. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He was just so a rich like, family. How they, get got, his they got his money. But how do you get his skills? You know. What do you mean? How do you get like training and stuff? I don't know. They, uh, like, during the time when they fought the Soviet Union, I guess, in uh, Afghanistan. Is that what we talk? Yeah, I'm just curious. Like, how did he become such a great military leader? Yeah, I think it's born? no, no, because no, uh, it's because of um, when they fought the Soviet Union in Afghanistan. America. Well, they gave them guns, though. First, but. All right. Yeah. Anyways. You got to read those books. Mm, yeah. Looming Tower. Yeah. I'm gonna get that. I'll read that. Figure it out. The book. Yeah, they kind of mentioned one of those, like uh, in 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 that article, like where they they were easy. They had easy time finding him, and going to see him where the CIA had difficulty. Uh huh. Yeah. And they said there was like well, they mentioned one part where it was uh, he was there that was bombed uh-huh. by the the CIA. Yeah. Which was what we saw in that show, Looming Tower. Oh, okay. When they tried to kill him, but they were kind of late. I don't remember. I I remember that it was like in Looming Tower where. Like, they wanted to attack, we should do it right now, like, mm. but they were too late when they ended up deciding on doing it. Oh, okay. Uh, and then, so, yeah, he's, like, his half-brother's like, oh, I was proud of him. But not in that sense. He's like, no, okay. hold up. <laughs> because he was my oldest brother, he, he taught me a lot of different things. Right, so, of course. So, of course. of course, yeah, that could make sense, yeah. Except for when he, what he did. Mm. <laughs> it was... Yeah, I think he, they was like there was. They also talked to like um, intelligence officer from Saudi Arabia that was there, and he was explaining. He met him a couple of times too, and tried to persuade him from not continuing what he was doing. Okay. And like, uh, like Saudi Arabia way. wanted him back to invest, like to 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 uh, question him and things like that. Yeah. He didn't go back. Okay. He went to like Sudan. He made honey business. Oh. Okay. Like, honey. Yeah. Oh, okay. And honey, yeah. And then That's I guess cool. that money was also used again. He was able to stay in Afghanistan because of the, the, the success against the Soviet Union. They kind of, cool. like, gave him... Im, uh, immunity? Kind of, yeah, like, him, he's allowed to stay or whatever. Hmm. And then kind of from there is where he became more popular and more... Interesting. ...leaderish in his al-Qaeda ways. It's funny how, stuff. like, everything is just a domino effect, you know what I mean? Like, like if you just cut off... Like, you know those movies where you can go back in time, like Looper? If you just kill them before they begin, <laughs> you know? I'm not saying kill, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, like, it, it's funny how it's just a giant domino effect of who you become in life is just a series of events. Yeah. And then we just call it, like, mm-hmm. life. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's a lot to the article. I think people should read it. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, near the end of it, they talked about his uh, youngest son, Hamza. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, Hamza. And he has... Um, what does that mean? What? His Hamza. Name? Yeah. I don't know his name. I don't know. You gotta look it up. Uh, he it has... Um, he's he's there fighting, like, on behalf of his dad. Like, he's trying to avenge his father's. Wait, what? Yeah. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. He's 29 wait, years old. Oh, wow. He's the same age as me. Yeah. We could be friends. Yeah. He's, uh, he's there still. Wait, 29 turning 30? I guess. Oh, same age. Best friends. <laughs> it's generational. Yeah, like he was saying, like, uh, quoting his, uh, I think it's his half-brother quoting the, the son of Osama. Like, I'm going to avenge my father. I don't want to go through that again. Or yeah. he was saying, like, I don't want to go through that again. If Hamza was in front of me right now, I would tell him to, like, God guide you and think twice about what you're doing. You know what this really is? It's almost like, people with a lot of clout we're, we're all subject to folly right yeah and like people with a lot of clout have the biggest voices so they can do all these crazy things right mm-hmm. i get now why in in the anime like you'd have the old master who wants to live in the mountains because he's like oh people are just silly i never got that before but like looking at this now it's mm-hmm. kind of like you almost just want to not detach or dissociate like it's interesting to hear about but it's like this does not, right. like, this is not something I want to, like, place my mm-hmm. energy mm-hmm. In, and focus on. Right. You know what I mean? Because, like, this is kind of ridiculous, <laughs> you know? Because <laughs> if you really look at why wars start, it's all over, like, power. Yeah, yeah, You're just trying to get more clout 
So people yeah. with clout already are just trying to battle for more clout, right. right? But if we just like detach from that, it just focus on your own thing, you know, it's like you'll be a lot happier. Let the chips fall where they may, I guess, you know? But then people are like, oh, but then you're just apathetic and you don't want to help. It's like, no, well, are you upset? Because I'm not upset because mm-hmm. they don't listen to it, you know? Oh, right. and then we're just slaves to society, but you're a slave to nature. So at any moment, we could have a giant hurricane that kills us. Right. So like, you know what I mean? It's like, if you think about life in terms of like how small we are, then these seemingly big problems are actually not very big problems. Mm-hmm. You know? Just saying. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of ridiculous. So, yeah. I, yeah, I didn't know about his um, his son. Yeah. He's still out there trying to... Like a freedom fighter? <laughs> yeah. Did they get an interview with his son? No, 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 no. no. He's not there, right? Oh. Oh, Okay. He's in Afghanistan. You know who's the same age as uh, him? Conor McGregor, me, ASAP Rocky, <laughs> Khabib Nurmagomedov, Kendrick Lamar. What, Kendrick Lamar? No, maybe not Kendrick Lamar. But it's like, I mean, I don't think Kendrick Lamar. But it's like, you know, it's like, right. dude, we're all from the same. It's what I find funny. It's like, we're all from the same year. Mm-hmm. These are these are like your your graduating class kind of thing, and then right. I always think like what what am I doing in relation to my graduating class, you know? Because like you hear about these people like freedom fighters, like giant rappers, fighters and stuff. When you hear that they're your age, you're like, oh, I'm at the age where I can actually make a difference in life. You know what I mean? Like yeah. when you're like twelve, it's like like shut up, freedom fighter kid. Unless you're like you know like a, a child soldier or something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But like we're actually at that age now where it's like like our choices matter and yeah. et cetera. I, I feel like there's gonna be a big shift. Mm-hmm. Like uh I'm watching this guy, uh Super Eye Patch Wolf. I think that's his name. And like oh. the things he was saying about anime, like being our formative years, like he called it formative media. Mm-hmm. And like everything he was talking about, I was like, Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Right. And it's like, oh, because I'm I'm that age, I'm that, that generation, you know? Mm. It's just weird, you know, and the fact that they're all doing that, it's like, oh, the mindset's definitely changing because, you know, like we didn't have to deal with war. We didn't have to deal with. Well, I mean, we saw it on the news in terms of like 9-11 and stuff, which is a great connection to Osama. But, you know, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just feel like there's, you know, the old, the old's going to die out and then the new are going to come in. Are you done with that? Yeah. Well, like. Um, like even with this Saudi king now. Oh yeah, he's yeah, more liberal. yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, he wants to. Um, yeah, I was say I was gonna, we, we did say. Who is he king? He is a king now. Yeah, oh, that's he's, cool. he's 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 actually like thirty or something. Thirty two. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yo. He's thirty two. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So like, yeah, we're, we're we're seeing like a. I don't want to say a shift in consciousness because that sounds super pretentious. <laughs> we're seeing a shift in paradigms. Is paradigms more less pretentious than consciousness? I don't know. Which is I, more pretentious? I guess. I which, which, all right. So, like, saying paradigms makes you sound like I'm elitist smart, and saying <laughs> conscious makes me sound like a hippie yogi. Right. So, which one do I want to be? Conscious paradigms? Can I put them together? So I sound like sure. I'm the best of both worlds? Yeah, sure. All right, anyways. Um, yeah, so, like, he wants to, because um, what happened in, in I think, so, because of all these terrorists that did the 9 11 came from Saudi Arabia. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it was like that you can't really do anything in Saudi Arabia. Like there was movies were, like the cinemas were like uh, stopped in a way. Like wait, sorry, like, sorry, sorry, sorry. Kind of like have them bored. So because uh, you're talking about education, and I I just thought it because I was making that joke about conscious paradigm shifts. Okay. Um. So like, chances are you don't know <laughs> that I'm like I'm running a because so- like that's my job, social media, right? So chances are you don't know that I'm the one uh, pushing forward a thought that you double tapped on Instagram. Okay. Right? Um, But the funny part about that is I've even begun to see people that follow the accounts that I manage changing their lexicon, their words, in in the way that I'm shaping it. So, like, I started to see a... like a de- uh, straying away or deviation from saying things like conscious because I don't use those words anymore because I'm like I feel that's pretentious so like on on every post that I do like for these other people I, I always say like perspective or paradigm or you know what I mean and then like I started to see other people using that who follow those accounts and I'm like oh that's how you educate the masses 
You just educate them through entertainment. They double set. They're like, yeah, this is cool. And then you motivate them by simply just doing. That's why I like social media. Because it's very innocuous. You know, you see it. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're talking about educating. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like about the (laughs) Tesla thing. Right. They're there to educate. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. that's that's really the scheme. Right. It's like, it doesn't matter if you don't buy it now, but your your thought process will change. Yeah. That's all I want. Yeah. Because you can't change. If you if you sell things through, uh, through like, impulse, mm-hmm. then you're never going to change anything. Right. Like, right? Like, let me sell you a car. Yeah. These are the benefits because it's easy. But then if you sell things through education, then it might not be today or tomorrow, but five years from now, 10 years from now, the whole, the whole um, mental attitude of a generation is going to shift. Mm-hmm. You know, like Dragon Ball Z. They're just entertaining us, but educating us at the same time. That's true. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's, that's how it works. That's uh, actually, that's a standard. So it's funny because like, you'll, it sounds common tactic mm-hmm. that they will use throughout time. Yep. You know, it's like, wh- why do you think they chose the specific books that they chose for your elementary school? Hello. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, why is the USSR still think they're in the uh, Cold War? Right. Education. Educate the masses. All right. Sorry, I'm deviating super hardcore on that one. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I think uh, it's good, good read. It's just interesting. All right. So it's, a, it's a seven thumbs up. Sure. You can say that. You know, you know, I was such a troll. I was doing this interview for uh, uh, my school when I came back from uh, working for the, oh, what was it called? The Global Edge program. And they're like, what would you like to say about this program? I was like, I'll give it a seven thumbs up. And then they wrote, you can Google it. Like, just type my name in. You'll see the article. It's like, Herbal James says, seven thumbs up for this program. I'm like, yeah, I was just trolling you, though. Because I was in a room and they're just, like, interviewing me. You know what I mean? It's, right. like, so funny. So funny. Yeah. That's funny. Perspectives. Anyway, so the last topic is... Uh, it's, it's, you didn't tell me what it is. So. Yeah, yeah. It's less of a question and more of like a thought engagement exercise. Well, I guess that's what questions do, but um, I was listening to... You. <laughs> I was listening to Hardcore History. You know Alexander the Great, right? Yeah. So this is just like... This is, the, this is in line with the Osama thing. So it's all about which point of view you're listening to. So I yeah, grew yeah, up yeah. like Alexander the Great's the best, right? Because that's Western culture. West, the West was influenced by Greek culture and Roman culture. You know, like Greeks influenced yeah, Romans. Yeah, I don't know who blah, blah, blah. put the great on there, right? That's also them. Right? Yeah, it's, you know, all right, and he was saying that they're, they're, everything is anecdotal. They don't actually know anything about Alexander the Great. The only actual historical evidence is one sentence in the history, mm-hmm. in the actual history t- textbooks. Everything else is other people's, like, mentions of him. Like, they're, like, speaking candidly about him. But, like... Probably Aristotle. Yeah, exactly. But, but like, if you actually look at, like, what's written down in history, they only have one sentence of Alexander the Great. I thought that was kind of funny. So, it's like, where did the Great come from, then? Is it in that sentence? All right. So, okay, okay. So, so Alexander the Great, because he was the greatest um, emperor of Macedonia. Yeah. Uh, and he fought the Persians, blah, blah, blah. So that's from the Greek perspective. Persians or the Babylonians? Uh, Babylonians, he also fought against the Persians as well. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, uh, so this is funny. So, like, in history, if you read the Bible, there's, like, um, Darius the Great and Cyrus. They're mentioned as being amazing leaders, right? They spoke directly with God. They're Persians. Mm-hmm. Right, so the reason why we have this negative perception is like the movie Three Hundred. You yeah. know that was Xerxes. He's the son of I think Cyrus, and he's the one who made it go downhill. Right, so that's not really what I want to get into. But what I want to say is like our our negative our negative perception of Persia through that movie, because all I knew about Persia was Three Hundred, the movie, oh. right. Okay. Like, did you did you read? Like, I didn't really read that much history, but I'm listening to this like history podcast, right? Yeah, now. but I wouldn't trust a movie. To that's what I'm saying. No, no, of course, of course, but like, but that's because you're coming at it from a place of like um, unbiased, objective observance, mm-hmm. right? But like, most people would just watch the movie and be like, oh yeah, they're bad, like right? You know, like I was <laughs> like that too. The movie even had like stuff that's not real though. That's yeah, I know, but but that movie came out in our formative years. I was like 14. No, no, how old is it? 
Uh, it was like 2000. I don't know, something. I, I was still like, on the gear, you're still forming your, your perspective because you're older than me, right? So like you, you had two years of introspection, whereas I didn't. So when I'm watching it, like I didn't have the extra two years of education, mm-hmm. self-education, right? Okay. So, um, uh, what was I going to say? This, this little pop-up over here confused me. Oh, so, <laughs> so, uh, uh, so, so what history actually tells you is the Persians are actually really open-minded. What they would do is they'd let you rule however you wanted to rule, you know? They'd just be like, they'd just be like okay, you're, just, you're submitting under us, but you get to keep your own governance, you get to keep your own army, you're just working with us. Like, you were just a team, right? Yeah. And oftentimes, like, even though, like, oh, the Greeks hated the Persians stuff, the Persians would actually pay a lot of Greeks to fight for them. Right. You know? So this is what, his, this is what the movie doesn't tell you and stuff. But what I really want to get into is, like, so Persians... That wasn't that time, though, right? That was, well, that was after they lost? Uh, the Persian, 300? Yeah, then... No, this is, like, on their rise to becoming amazing. Yeah, I mean, like, paying Athenians to fight their... I think that was after, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, because they like lost and they had to like, they had to like three hundred. Yeah, they yeah, lost. Maneuver yeah. out of it and stuff. But so well, they're not gonna get into that. So arguably, they're a very open-minded culture, which is like very what we would we would aspire to be like today. They even ruled through truth. They, it was it was like a capital punishment, like death, if you lied, right? Mm-hmm. They didn't. They also and because of that, they didn't believe in merchants, right? You should right. pay fair value for what it is. Okay. But they didn't like the Greeks because the Greeks were very mercantile. Mm-hmm. So, like, they didn't like the fact that you could lie about how much something cost. Right? Mm-hmm. So, sounds good. If we were saying that, like, wouldn't you want, like, you know, like, all the spiritualists of today, wouldn't you want to live in a society where everyone told the truth? And wouldn't you want to live in a society where everyone's open-minded, very liberal, blah, right. blah, blah? We'd be like, yeah, of course we want to do that. So, why is Alexander the Great Alexander the Great? Actually, Alexander the Great's nickname to the Persians was the Demon King. They didn't look at him as a great person. They thought of him as like a sword, like a demon that was coming to slay their lands. They were the scared. Persians? Yeah, they were scared of Alexander. Yeah, I don't. No, no, I, right, right. Okay. But what I'm saying is, history doesn't tell. History doesn't say he's the Demon King. They tell you he's well, Alexander. Well, his enemies the great. would call him that. Why wouldn't they? Right, right. But what I'm saying is. Through when, our perspective, yeah. we we see him as a warrior of justice. He's Alexander the Great, going to do great things, right? No, I don't think but, I meant. But if we if we call him, any warrior would have, like, he's killing people. Of course, of course, of course. But what I'm saying is, like, the social narrative is that he's great. That's why he's got Alexander the Great. We don't call him Alexander the Demon King, right? Co- like colloquially known, right? Popularly but what if, what known. What the three hundred call Xerxes, right? Uh, the Persian loser? I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Wouldn't they call him also like 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 a demon in a way? No, not not a demon. They they said he was effeminate, so they called him like. A, no, but that's like their that's their version. No, no, their version. version of being right, right, right. offensive. To him. Now this brings back my Osama thing. Yeah. So that's why I'm like, yeah, but if you won, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Just like Hitler, we wouldn't be having this conversation. We. Like, history is always told in the light of the winner. Of course. And that's what we forget. So, no, no, but if you realize that history is told in the light of the winner, then you have to look at your current state. Is this person say? I'm not saying he's right. <laughs> you know, I like, like, don't, don't kill me, FBI, or whatever, you know. <laughs> I'm not saying he's right. I, if, like, if you want to judge my position, I've, I've become that, that freaking person in the mountains being like, you guys, I'm just going to talk about it, but you guys and do your own things because I don't want to get involved, you know, which right. is kind of funny because I always wanted to be a spy. That's why I like did all the martial arts stuff. Mm-hmm. But like now it's like, I just don't want to get involved because uh, it's like, it's kind of ridiculous in my mind, you know? But that, that's like the oldest thing though. I knew that a long time ago. Which one? History is told by the winners. I know. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. So like, I think you knew that too. It just, uh, we'd say it. No, no. Like, uh, it's sort of like Blink-182, um, Oh, I'm trying to think of their lyrics right now. Oh, I can't think of any. Uh, but like you'd you'd say these things as a kid, but they never have any impact. Like you you you'd say things, but you wouldn't fully understand them because mm-hmm. you don't have the the experience or the life experience or the knowledge to understand yeah. what it is you're saying. We would just repeat things because they were like very catchy and engaging. Okay. Um. So okay. Uh. So I I you know Dan Carlin. 
No, sorry, not Dan Carlin. That's the history of Fire Guy. Uh, who's the comedian? Carlin? George Carlin? Yeah. All right, so Blink-182 has a song called, um, uh, well, I don't want to swear, but it's called uh, Happy Holidays or something like that. Mm-hmm. And they just swear throughout the whole thing. They just, like, the whole song is just repeating swear words, okay. right? So I thought that was funny as a kid, right? So you're just repeating something, right? But then later in my older age did I find out through experience and, like, learning about the world, that's Dan Carlin's comedy skit. So he, Dan, not Dan Carlin, George Carlin, sorry. <laughs> Dan Carlin's the historian. Oh, shit, History okay. on Fire. Uh, George Carlin, uh, he fought against um, censorship. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, oh, okay, you guys have censorship? And then he just listed off these swear words, right, in a specific order. And then that became their song. Mm-hmm. So it's like, if you look at the levels just it's sort of like watching a disney movie and then like being older you're like oh i get the more adult connotations you know what i mean so when you say oh you knew that as a kid it's like yeah i knew of it but i didn't know it you know what i'm saying it's hitting more home now that i'm older and being like oh this is history is totally written by the winners yeah. we would say that to like be jerks it's like when i talked to my my teacher and i was like oh we're like a cult no, I think I, I took didn't that really to, know what it meant. Right, I took that to heart. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. But it's also your upbringing. Like, I don't know, like, maybe in your household they were, like, feeding you that? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, somehow, because I, I, I don't know how it came up or who said it. Someone said it. That, that kind of, like, made me think, oh, shit, you were right. So, like, you, I would just question whoever the win, like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, that's just their perspective. True, 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 true. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Right, I yes, think that's I probably where that, that happened no. from. I'd say it to be like a disturber. <laughs> like, I'd, you know what I mean? Like, like uh, just say it because it's funny yeah. to me. And then you'd watch like your teachers be like, "What are you saying? That's no, that's terrible." Right. You know, I, just, I, I got a kick out of it, but I never really like, took it seriously. Oh. But now I'm taking it seriously. It's like, oh, that's very true. The more you educate yourself, the more you see the duality of every situation, the bias. Mm-hmm. Everything's like subjective bias, you know. Cause that's life, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, you're gonna be influenced by some stuff, something. It's true. Just what happens with our brains. That's true. And then when you think about it, if like life just went on and like there was a hurricane and then we all died, it's like what? What subjective does bias? It, does it really matter? Yeah, that's 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 actually one of the one of the takeaways I really like about uh, having like a dog, because they really don't care about your silliness like I could be like oh man I got this problem this problem and then she's like just feed me you know you know what I mean like, yeah, 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 yeah. I really like that about the dog because they remind you of like how silly your feeble mental problems are right yeah so until next that, time that was my that was the stars for me I guess. the stars yeah you're looking up at the sky but we have light pollution I can't see anything up there no, yeah. looking at the sky scared me actually because it felt like I was falling yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know. I guess I like falling into knowledge for you, though. Oh snap! I fell into enlightenment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So yeah, final final thoughts, takeaway. Um. You know, be uh, be beautiful. Be mindful be you. of who oh. you're reading it from. <laughs> like just who the who's telling the story. That's true. Yes. My what were you saying? Oh, no, I was just being like, I was being another disturber. Be beautiful, be you, be great. No. Love all that you do because yeah. the universe is full of love. If there is no love, there's no creation. <laughs> if there is no love, there is no people, there is no you. So love every aspect of your life. Can you though? You tell me. That's too, too much. Lovey dubby. <laughs> yeah. You know what? That's like, that's how you get taken advantage of. It's like, you should love the fact that you're giving me this money right now. So give it to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you should love your situation. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like, yeah. it's so, like, contradictory. Yeah. I feel like people that say those things don't really understand what they mean. They're just, like, hopeful. They're, like, delusioned optimists. Right. You know, deluded optimists. You know, because it's like, yeah, it's like, if you really believe that, then feel, feel glad knowing that you're going to give me your year's paycheck. Mm. Please. GodLetMyFire.com. Send me an email and give me your money. If uh, 
if you if you really believe in the love because I would love if you did that yeah that'd be great yeah alright till next time cool too easy peace bye